Can you hello, hello? And now it works. And now it works. Oh, there you go. Can you still hear me? Can you still Tell me can oh sorry. So Do you want me to come back another day? <laughs> Shall I just touch it? When it, yeah, see, I should touch it. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Hold it there, fine, thank you. Okay, so first some background. Um, last year at the uh, uh, Pearl Conference in Glasgow, I gave a presentation about uh, Pearl 5 and how, we, and how we can go on from that. So I would like to go back to that first and give you a short summary. Uh, basically, in 1994, Wendy and I started this company in the Netherlands doing uh, well, it wasn't called DevOps yet, but we had our first Perl project then in 1994. And one of the nice things that we actually did with Perl was the first online flight information system on the web in 1995 for Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. So <coughs> that's when I actually fell in love with Perl. And over the next five years or so, we did a lot of things with uh, Perl, Perl 5. And we sold the company in 1999, and after that we had some time left to do stuff. And one of the things that we did, we co-organized the uh, second YAPSI Europe in Amsterdam. And we did one uh, 16 years later in Amsterdam again, co-organized that. Um, meanwhile, in the early 2000s, I did a lot of uh, modules on CPAN, specifically about uh, I.O. layers and threads. Um, then in 2003, I started doing work for Booking. At the time, that had 35 people involved there. And I stayed there for about uh, nine years until there were about 5,000 people in the company. And it was not the same anymore, and I decided to do something else. Meanwhile, Wendy and I were doing a lot of uh, booths and dev rooms at uh, open source conferences like FOSDEM and OSCON, and some others like FrostCon and TDOS and whatever. Um, in 2012, after leaving Booking, I actually, we also, also organized a uh, Pearl Reunification Summit. And if you look carefully on this picture, you see some people in here. One, two, and let me see here, three, and that's four, and that's five, who are, well, at least at the conference, maybe not here, but at least at the conference. Um, <coughs> In 2013, I started actually working on Recruit Pro 6. Uh, did some commits in the meantime. Um, and then uh, about a year ago or so, I started uh, developing Perl 5 functionality for Perl 6. Because I realized if we want to actually move Perl 5 code to Perl 6, the syntax is one thing. Actually getting all the semantics in there is also very important. So I did all of these internal functions of Perl 5, and I did a lot of modules, core modules of Perl 5, and uh, some other modules that are CPAN. So I think I can say I love Perl 5 and Perl 6. And that was the takeaway of my talk last year. I think the future of Perl is here. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, in the meantime, I'm also doing uh, the Pearl 6 Weekly. Uh, we're up to 258 weekly so far. <laughs> uh, Timo Paulson started this, and I basically took over him about four years ago. <coughs> and every week when I'm writing the Perl 6 weekly, I'm, I'm basically researching a lot of stuff about Perl and Perl 6. And basically I, I gathered a number of myths in the over the past year or so. 
um, myths about Perl and Perl 6. So um, when I was asked to actually do a keynote here, I thought, well, maybe I should visit those myths and see what they are about and if they are true or not. So what I did, I took those myths and basically uh, I gathered them from Research on the Pulse 6 Weekly and I basically put them into Google, select only the past month and I put them into Twitter and Twitter uh, doesn't really allow you to select a period but it does allow you to actually sort on date. So one of these um, myths that I've encountered is that Perl 6 is vaporware. And true. The thing is that if you search on Google for the past months, you don't find anything about it. And if you look on Twitter, there's actually a tweet of Carl Masak in 2010 <laughs> that is actually the last thing that actually mentions, mentions that. So I, I, I would argue that uh, that myth actually has been vanquished. Yay! Um, this is poor scientific, I know, probably very poorly <laughs> scientific, but hey, you got to do something, right? In any case, um, there, I there are downloads for Rakuto Star that you can just go and fetch and run Pulse 6 with all sorts of modules and everything, so it's there. It's not vaporware. Another of those myths is Pulse 6 is dead. And that actually appears to be rather alive, that myth. There was a huge thread recently on uh, Reddit with this very nice title. And there's a lot of, well, a lot of this uh, reactions on that. So I would say that myth is very much alive. Although, <coughs> if you look at the, like the commits of the past month, we had 14 hour, uh, authors doing 103 commits, so that's basically three commits a day. And uh, I, I would say this is not a dead project. So I think that myth is incorrect, although it is still alive. Another myth that I encountered is Perl 6 is not released. Um, and very recently people say, well, actually it is released and it wasn't rushed and it's okay that it was late. And that's the only thing I found actually in the past month or on Twitter. So I would actually say that this myth has been vanquished. So, good. And to actually prove a point, we actually had a recent release. So, uh, yes. Right. So, <laughs> it's one of those myths, right? I'm not making this up. Um, so, <coughs> if you look at it in Google for the past month and on Twitter, uh, you see that this is actually from 2015. So, I would actually argue that this is long, time, long ago, yes, uh, this, this way, so I would actually argue that this myth is also vanquished. So, that's good. And to basically show you something that really doesn't suck, Sorry, Perl 5. Um, adding rational numbers actually works in Perl 6. <laughs> and automatic upgrades to big ins also just works in Perl 6. Yeah, it's quite a number. Yeah. It's close to infinity, I guess, for some value of infinity. <laughs> so. Another myth that we have is Perl 6 is slow. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, you get used to it when you use Perl 6, right? Um, so recently in the, the same thread it came out that it is abysmally slow and well, basically it's slow and overly complex and everything. So I would argue that this myth is actually very much alive. Um, I would argue, well, this myth is not entirely correct. Um, if you, for instance, compare a bare startup of Perl 6 on my machine and a bare startup of Perl 5 with Moose, 
because, yeah, I mean, that's the closest equivalent that you have to PIL 5 and PIL 6, I would say. Um, the times are not that much different. And I would also refer to Jonathan's excellent talk yesterday about uh, performance, which I hopefully will be on YouTube as a separate presentation soon. So I would argue if you haven't seen it yesterday, go look at it. <coughs> Perl 6 isn't Perl. Um, that's one that apparently still comes up pretty recently. Um, so <laughs> I would say it's very much alive. Um, the other week, or past week, we had a Perl Weekly Challenge. Thank you, Mohammed, by the way, for starting this up. Uh, and we actually had, for the first time, a, a dedicated Perl 5 programmer doing a Perl 6 version of his solution. And if you look at the Perl 6 solution, apart from the chump, it looks like Perl 5 to me. And it does work. Of course, the chomp you actually don't need because lines in Perl 6 automatically chomps for you anyway, so you can get rid of that. <laughs> Another myth that we that I found is Perl 6 isn't finished. And yes, it is a myth that is still live. So basically, I would say this myth is still very much alive. I would like to point out that we had a release recently again, so. <coughs> Another one of those, uh, it, I will stop. It will not go on like this for all the time, so. <coughs> Pulse 6 is inconsistent. Um, that pretty much seems to be alive as well. However, however I would say, I don't think that's true. Um, look at this piece of Pulse 6 code that we have here. Um, look at the curlies at the end of the line. A curly at the end of a line means end of statement, period. That's it. Consistent. If that's part of an if, or part of a block, or part of a hash, ref, a hash deref, or hash access, I, would I should say, a curly brace at the end of the line means end of statement. Also, if you have something between curly braces, it means it's code inside. This goes for a block like this. This goes for a block inside a double quoted string. This goes for an if, Gesundheit, Gesundheit, Gesundheit. <laughs> I was waiting for to find out the number of. <laughs> or if we actually access in a hash. So in Perl 5, this would be G just be A. But because in Perl 6, anything between curlies is code, you need to quote it. Of course, you can use any quote that you want, smart quotes, uh, funny quotes, whatever. They, they all work in Perl 6. So I think this is very consistent. Also, when I actually assign a block to a variable and I call it by putting the parens around it, after it, it means, parens means whatever is in front of it, call it. In this case, without any parameters, if I put parameters in there, call it with those parameters. And this goes for just like that, or if you actually put it inside of a quoted string. This is very consistent, I would say. So I think the inconsistent thing about Perl 6 is not true. Perl 6 is very consistent. Perl 6 is too complicated. Um, again, very recent in that very same thread yeah, it's too complicated, it's too hard. So I would say this thread, this uh, myth is very much alive. I'm not sure how you can prove that it's not too complex because I think complexity is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I'm not sure what is complex to me may not be complex to you and vice versa. So I'm not sure how we can actually, tr well, fight that myth. And I guess the similar thing about Perl 6 is unreadable line noise. Um, pretty much alive, so there you go. But again, I'm not sure how you can actually 
prove that it is not. So I, I would say, again, readability is in the eye of the beholder. Always getting there. Uh, a myth is Pulse 6 has a bizarre ecosystem. Ecosystem? I don't know. Um, again, pretty recent, also on, on Twitter. So <coughs> I would say this myth is very much alive. Uh, but to the casual user using the Pulse 6 ecosystem, I think it can't get much simpler than just basically saying Zev install module. It might be a little more verbose than you're used to from CPNM, but basically the functionality is the same. So I don't think it's bizarre or difficult or anything. I mean, what happens behind there, the fact that we need to actually check for things here, well, yeah. That might be bizarre, but it's also a result of how things actually developed and making sure that everything still keeps working without breaking one or the other system. Um, myth. Pearl 6 has no killer app. Very much alive. We're compared to Lisp here. <laughs> and I would argue, uh, actually, this is a fact. I don't think we have a killer app. Oh. I would say yet. Uh, people might argue that Crow is a killer app, but Crow is, I would say, it's not even a framework, but it's a tool for making killer apps. So please do. I mean, this is, Pull 6 has no books. And, well, I, I, I would say this is actually very much alive for some reason, and I would argue, well, actually, you go out to the stand there and there's plenty of books that you can buy about Pearl 6. <laughs> Except this one, unfortunately, we don't actually have in stock. And, and the, the top left doesn't, exist yet. doesn't exist yet. Okay, well, there you go. It it's a vapor book. <laughs> We need to discuss this. <laughs> no? <laughs> we need to remove this. Yeah, OK. Well, J. Who? That's more it. OK. Well, guess who's actually maintaining this page? <laughs> Mor <laughs> Moritz is maintaining that page. <laughs> Moritz, if you're watching, OK. <laughs> Pearl 6 has no, mi no, no niche. Niche, right? That's how you say it in English, right? Uh, same as Dutch. Uh, I, yeah, this is my very much alive. Uh, no target demographic. That's something that, I mean, did we actually talk about demographics about 20 years ago? Was that a thing? Is that something, I don't know. Anyway, we don't have a target demographic. Uh, and no niche. So I would say uh, that's a fact. I would so also say we don't have any niches yet. Is it web scale? Well, um, <laughs> if, if Mongo is, yes. <laughs> um, Pearl 6 has no IDE. Um, actually, we do. So this myth is unfortunately very much alive. I would say if you're into IDEs, get Coma. There's actually a community version for free. If you want to really have all of the latest features, you can actually pay a little money per year and get all of the latest features, like refactoring. And what are the latest features, uh, Jonathan? The latest features? Yeah. OK, so uh, really nice uh, tools for writing applications using Crow, and uh, a very nice way to find out how your uh, application is actually performing, uh, especially if you're actually uh, using asynchronous features of Crow. Um, another myth that we have is 
Pool 6 has no REPL, and that's still alive. I would say, oh, sorry, this is not alive, actually. I should look carefully. So it actually has a REPL, so um, this was recent, and I couldn't find anything else in the past month for, for this, so I would say this actually this is vanquished. vanquished. Uh, to give you an example of the REPL, you just type in Perl 6, it tells you how to exit. You can type an expression, you can type another expression, you get the result of that, and you can, well, it works. And to point out for the Perl 5 people around here, XX is the uh, version creating lists, and X is the version repeating strings and concatenating them. Perl 6 is too little, too late. Um, very much alive still, I would say. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I would argue that it may be too late, but I don't think too little applies. If you look at the number of commits that we did for Rakudo, 31,000 so far, and for the documentation that we have, it's well over 12,000 commits. And if you look at the number of contributors, I would say it's not too little. If anything, it's too much. <coughs> Myth, Pulse 6 has no serious users. Um, very much alive, this myth. Um, Actually, we're like about a week too early. At the Swiss Perl workshop, Fritz Sauker will actually give a presentation about an application written in Perl 6 and JavaScript for companies needing to actually uh, follow EU regulations with regards to financial institutions. This is written in Perl 6 using Crow, and I would say this is, if not the first official, uh, production use of Perl 6. So I, I guess that myth is on the way out. Uh, the myth is Perl 6 is the next version of Perl. Um, this actually appears to be very much alive. And so there you go. Even though we in the documentation of Perl 6 actually say that we're sister languages, everybody still thinks about that. That it is the uh, next version. And this is the last myth that I'm going to treat here. Pearl 6 has damaged Pearl 5. This myth is still very true, but actually, I think this myth is not a myth, it's a fact. Um, several reasons why you could argue that this is the case. I think one of the best examples of that is the Osborne effect, basically announcing something new so that people stop using the old and then not delivering the new. That's killing. Um, and actually Osborne, actually I have used an Osborne one way back in the day. This is so much lighter. Oh. Anyway. <coughs> So, yes, and if you look at the state of Perl 5 in regard to CPAN uploads, this was actually recently published by Perl Ankar about the dwindling number of CPAN uploads. It's actually, I think the graphs are actually very positive here because Perl Ankar is responsible for about 20% of the uploads currently. And Mohammed, you're responsible for all those pull requests so that all of these authors that wouldn't actually upload it otherwise are still uploading. Um, but yeah, the numbers are going down for sure. Uh, that was um, the pull request, uh, pull request challenge, I think it was. He it, 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 it talks about it in his blog post, so look it up on his, uh, on his blog post. <laughs> Don't think so, but yeah. Um, 
I have a deduced fact, and I think it's very positive. It's probably a lot less. But in 2019, I would say programmers in the world, only 4% is actually using Perl 5. This is, comes from, uh, we had about 3 million software developers in 2000. We currently have about 25 million. Assuming that we had one third of those people in 2000 using Perl 5, assuming that they didn't get any more Perl 5 programmers or any less, so we went down from 33% to 4% now. And this also becomes clear if you look at things like uh, Reddit, where Python has like 400,000 members, Perl has about 12,000, and Perl 6 has about 1,500 members. If you look at Stack Overflow, similar numbers, 1.2 million questions, Perl 5, 63,000 questions, Perl 6, 1,100 questions. <laughs> but I, would, I should say that the, the, the thing about Perl here is, uh, of course, badly skewed because for the longest time, people with Perl 5 questions would go to Perl monks and not go to Stack Overflow. So I think this is badly skewed, but it's nonetheless, it's an indication. So are you depressed already? Well, I am. And in that, respect, in, in that respect, the fact that I said last year that the future of Perl is here could be interpreted in many ways. <laughs> so uh, after Larry's talk yesterday, where he basically said, the, the children have left the house and they need to figure out for themselves what they want to do. So I think as Perl communities here, we need to figure out how to deal with ourselves and how to deal with each other. And to actually help that, um, well, let's go back a little step. Uh, about a half a year ago, uh, Alex Daniel started a problem solving repo on for Perl 6. This was about, not about technical questions, this was about meta questions, things that we need to get uh, consensus on and basically uh, look forward how we can deal with things in this community. <coughs> this morning, I added another issue. I think Perl in the name Perl 6 is confusing and irritating. It has a little history about initially Perl 6 was going to be Perl 5. Um, we're not source compatible, so the world still sees Perl 6 as the successor of Perl 5, and I think it's time to actually change the name. And as Larry indicated, we need to figure this out for ourselves. So <coughs> in good, um, uh, if reading the, 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 the way you should use the problem solver repo, there's the question or thing that you want to talk about, and then you can start giving comments on them. And the first comment I gave was this. I therefore propose to rename Perl 6 to Camellia. Camellia, because if you actually type in Camellia programming language, you actually wind up at the right place. Perl6.org. Um, the logo mascot wouldn't need any changing. It's just now that the name of the mascot is now the name of the language. Um, it, it, it's, Camellia still has something Perlish in it, if you look carefully. And the concept of Camellia being an implementation of a specification would work like this. If we actually, the, one of the other things I've thought about, oh, let's call the language Rakudo, but then we're going to actually conflate the implementation with the language. And that's something that we don't want to do. Um, Choosing another name like Albus, like Damien did uh, a few years ago to actually get people to come to his talks because they wouldn't come if they had Perl in the name. Um, well, you basically lose all of your findability on, on search engines. And 
Finally, the Camellia logo is still copyright Larry Wall, so he's still somehow connected to the whole thing. So, <coughs> what does this all mean? It is a serious proposal to change the name of Pulse 6 to Camellia without needing the approval of Larry Wall. Needing consensus only of the current Pulse 6 core developers. It's nothing more, nothing less than that. It should remove the squat of Perl 6 on Perl. It should allow Perl to continue to refer to, to continue to refer to Perl 5. Like it is, in fact. If you look at the program of this conference, if you look at the titles of the presentations that have Perl in them, there's only one presentation that has Perl 5 in them. And all of the other ones that have just Perl in them mean Perl 5. And it should allow Perl to actually use a higher version number eventually, I would say. Not like tomorrow. That would really be confusing. So will this split up the community? I don't know. Will it? No. Should it? Should it not? I mean, these are questions that we need to figure out together. Right? And there's not so much you can do with a group of people that agree or disagree on things, so we need to figure it out together. We can't actually have Larry somewhere in the background saying, you should or you shouldn't do that. We need to figure it out ourselves. What about the conference? Well, I would say the Perl conference would imply Perl 5 only. So I have suggestions for other names. The Perl community conference. The Tim Toady conference. <laughs> the Tim Toady conference. The Wall conference. The Pearly McBoatface conference. <laughs> well, you come up with a bright idea, right? Um, I'm very glad I'm not a conference organizer anymore, so I don't have to. <laughs> so what are the timescales that we're looking at? I would hope that we get a few weeks to reach consensus about this issue. And then we hopefully, within a few weeks after that, reaching consensus, that we could start seeing the very few first changes. Of course, some changes are easy. Some changes may take years. Think books. Um, we need to make stickers for a lot of books and basically say, <laughs> new, improved, Camellia. Uh, some other changes are easier. Like this thing that I started last year. I love Pearl 5, I love Pearl 6. Well, that's easy enough. It could work, I think. So that is basically um, what I wanted to talk to you about today. It's about not actually demythifying Pearl 6. It's actually about demythifying the Pearl family. Questions? 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 Curtis. I want to rename Pearl 6 to IOS. Could you the question? Well, if I can understand it. Could you rename the uh, Pearl 6 to? IOS. Nice time. <laughs> Tayo. Tayo. The index. Everyone's constantly searching. Tayobi. Okay. <laughs> Could we rename Pearl 6 to Tayobi? Um, <laughs> I would say that's technically an option, maybe not legally. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a nice thought. I mean, it reminds of SQL injection and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> and, and recursive, hmm, okay. Other question. Okay, this, um, uh, at the Swiss Pearl, uh, I mentioned the killer app, and the question is, what is that killer app? Oh, no, no, it's not a killer app, it's a use of Pearl 6 in production. I said there was no killer app yet. Yeah, but you said there's... Oh. 
Crow. Crow is the, uh, the framework for building interactive uh, microservices. So it, it's a it's, um, very uh, nice, uh, I wouldn't say frame, would you say framework? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't say framework, but everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I would uh, point you to that. Um, it is, uh, it really uh, allows you to very easily create um, web services, microservices, and basically do all the routing uh, using Perl 6 signatures. So it's very easy for you to actually work with that. Okay. Other questions? I, I haven't an, an idea of the temperature of the room, actually, yes. Uh, actually, I wouldn't have uh, actually put this issue on the uh, problem-solving repo if I had had the idea that it would not be a feasible thing. Right. There, there will be some people that need more convincing than others, but I think we'll be able to get there. Did I repeat the question? No. Kind of. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, that, 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 I mean, those are the issues. Oh, the question is, well, Camellia has a lot of letters on the com command line so to actually type in. Uh, well, the, 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 for me, actually, I have uh, some aliases. So if I run something in, in the command line in, in Perl 6, like, like Perl 6 minus E, I have this alias called 6 and type in whatever I want to run. Right. Um, so, yeah, it will be called Camellia, probably, and people will find shortcuts or ways of making it not having to type on that all the time. And, of course, if you're running something like uh, uh, Comma, you don't actually have a command line like that anyway. So. Could you speak up a little bit? Sorry. Rakuta is still the implementation, yes. Sorry, that? That would be what you would be running. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's already the case. I mean, if you type in Perl 6, you're running Rakuto. So in, in that sense, it doesn't change anything. Did I repeat the question? Oh, fuck. Uh, right. That's a very good question. Well, the Raku name it was an, it's supposed to be an alias. And I, 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 I don't know if you've written my blog post about Raku when it came out. My standpoint on that was if you really want to use an alias and make it work, because you start the alias because you don't want to be um, connected with the f word Perl, but then you say, there's going to be an alias so you can say Perl Raku if you want to. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I, was, I already said then, if you want to make Raku work, Take all of the source code of Perl 6, change Perl 6 everywhere to Raku, make a Rakuto star-like uh, distribution, and put that out in the world. And nobody did. <laughs> so I, I think that shows that people are not that serious about using Raku. Also, Raku, um, as a, a, a term to search on, is not very healthy. It's it's. <laughs> you get a lot of garbage uh, in your search results. So that's, I think that's another reason why Raku is not the success that some people might uh, thought it would be. The, I have one hope, though, is that uh, one of the core developers after the Raku uh, incident, I could say, um, happened, has left the core, the Pulse 6 core uh, community. And I really, really hope that this change will actually make him consider to come back. Okay. No more questions? Then I guess everybody is ready for a short break and digest everything that I've said. Thank you very much. <laughs>